In today's video, we're talking about how to get sharper images. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to talk about something that comes up a lot um, in photography discussions, which is how to get the sharpest images possible. And uh, there's actually a lot of things that can contribute to a uh, photograph not being sharp. And so I've got a lot of notes in here. So just excuse me if I keep looking down here. I just want to make sure that I don't want to miss out. Uh, I don't miss out on any of the points that I want to talk about. Um, but primarily, when you when you start getting shots that are not in focus or they're not as sharp as possible, uh, there's really four things that can contribute to that. The first one would be that you just simply missed the focus or the camera missed the focus. And I'll explain how a camera can miss the focus in a second, um, but you, it just wasn't focused correctly. Uh, the second thing was that you had some movement in the camera. So some camera vibrations. Uh, the third thing would be the subject, the subject has moved. Uh, and uh, so that can also cause images that are not, that are not sharp. And then the last thing would be uh, the lens that you're using. So not all lenses are equal. Uh, you get some better quality ones and you get some some that just simply don't produce sharp images. So we're going to talk about all four of those things um, and uh, go into uh, detail a little bit more on each one of them. So let's start off with the easy one, which is uh, that you may be using manual focus. So if you're getting the focus point wrong, then that's just a matter of practice. Uh, so you just have to keep at it and you will get better at it. Now, keep in mind that some cameras do have some uh, some tools to assist you, even when you are in manual focus. Uh, I think the Canon R5 has these two little triangles that when you place a focus point on a subject, even though you're in manual focus, uh, you can uh, turn the uh, autofocus ring on the lens and these two little triangles will point at each other. And then when they're directly pointing at each other, then theoretically, that is when the image is in focus. Um, back in the film days, we used to have this sp uh, a split prism where the uh, image would be split in two and then you would line them up and th the same thing. That would mean that the image is now in focus. Um, but one of the things that is available on just every camera that I've ever seen is uh, live view. So with live view, when you're in manual focus, often uh, cameras allow you to zoom in uh, using uh, on the screen itself. So you can see like really tiny details on the uh, on the back of the screen, and then that allows you to really fine tune your focuses. That, that's a really good way to uh, to try and make sure that you nail focus. And a lot of the times, you, I, I prefer to shoot foc uh, manual focus uh, with things such as uh, landscapes, or you'll have some uh, some scenes where sometimes it's a little bit darker. Uh, again, the autofocus doesn't work every single time, so sometimes you need to be able to know how to do this so that you can override that. Uh, one thing that I'll just uh, bring up really quickly is um, that if you are having problems, uh, if you wear glasses like myself and you are having problems with the manual uh, with the manual focus, one of the things that you might want to check is the diopter on the camera. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, I'll just show you really quickly. Um, the diopter is often hidden behind the eye cup of the eyepiece. Uh, how you remove these on just about any, doesn't matter which camera, they're all pretty much the same. You just squeeze on the side and you pull up and then you'll notice that there's a little wheel uh, just in there. So this allows you to dial in a prescription and quite often people with glasses don't know that this exists and then they have a, a real hard time doing manual focus because the image through there is not as clear, um, it, it's not clear to begin with. So that becomes very difficult to then try to um, gauge it uh, the, the focus just by looking at the image. So make sure that uh, this is set correctly to your eye. Um, and then when you're done, you can just slide this back on and the eye, the, um, eye cup itself protects uh, the, uh, the dial in there so that it doesn't get moved. Uh, but that's something that you may want to do. I've got a video about this. Um, I'll, t I'll actually link to it um, somewhere up here as well if you want to know more about the diopter. Okay, now if you're using automatic focus, then uh, one of the things that you need to keep in mind is that the camera is going to try and figure out what it is that you're trying to focus on. And the focusing systems are, are very clever these days, but um, it's still trying to predict what it is that you're trying to take a photo of. And so it's not 100% accurate every single time. So the best way to do that, I find, is to use a single point uh, focus point. And uh, you can do that. Most cameras will let you do that. And you just place the focus point in the center of the screen where it allows you to then 
uh, point that focus point on your subject, press the, button, the shutter button halfway down, it will lock onto the subject, and then while still holding the shutter button halfway down, you can then recompose your photograph and take your picture. So that is a really accurate way to do it. Now, I should point out that that, is, that will be accurate as long as your lens and camera are calibrated. And that is um, something that I'll, I'll, I'll quickly sort of uh, briefly go into now. But if you want me to make a video about this, just let me know in the comment section below and I'll make a whole video on um, all the details on how to calibrate your lens. But let me just, um, let me just say this. So every lens is different. It doesn't matter what brand or what manufacturer. Uh, you could get you could get the two versions or exactly the same versions of two of the same lens, and there will be uh, some slight differences. And when you put that lens together with a camera, it will it, it should perform, but it doesn't perform every single time. And sometimes they can go out of alignment. And uh, when you uh, when you think that the camera is, is focusing on something, it may actually be focusing on something just slightly behind or slightly in front of the subject. And how you can check this is you can use a, a calibration chart. Now, if you don't have a calibration chart, you can buy one or if you want to, uh, you can download the one that I made. I just made my own in here and I'll put a link uh, in the description where you can download this one, but you can get it from the, uh, from ministryofphoto.com in the resources page. And what this does, and again, I'll go into, if you want me to make a video, I'll go into details, but essentially what you're doing is uh, you are, uh, th that's the chart there, and you have to tape this onto something that's flat and rigid. That's very important. And then what you do is you place this at a 45 degree angle, okay? so. If my camera is, let's say over here, I would place this at a, 43, a 45 degree angle or, or thereabouts, um, maybe say five, six meters away from the camera. And I would take a picture of, let me see if I can get you to focus on that. I don't think it's focusing. There is a little dot here, okay? So there's a little dot here and there's some lines. And because you're in an angle, when you take a picture or, and you focus on the dot, you will notice that these lines over here Ideally, the big long line should be in focus, okay? But when the lens and the camera is out of, uh, or needs calibration, you will notice that some of the lines above or below are in focus, and um, ideally what you need is uh, that big line there to be in focus. Now, most cameras, well, actually, some cameras have the ability to be able to go in there and calibrate your lenses. Um, a lot of cameras don't, and you have to send them to the manufacturers uh, to get that done for you. But uh, with the 1DX that I've got, the 5Ds, uh, all of those can actually do it. And uh, I think a lot of the cameras can actually do this. And what you can do is you can reset that point. either You can move it forward or you can move it backwards, depending on the results of um, the calibration uh, chart. So again, if you want to download that, you can download it from uh, ministryofphoto.com. Uh, there's a resource page, but I'll also put a link in the description. Um, so yeah, you can grab a copy of that. Now, um, the other thing that can cause problems with the autofocus is if you've got a dirty lens. So a lot of cameras use a method called uh, a contrast uh, method. And if you have a dirty lens, then that could also interfere with the focusing system. So when you do clean your lens, make sure that you clean the front of the lens, okay? And use um, proper uh, cleaning material for the uh, for the front. Usually just a, a lint-free cloth will, will do. But also make sure that you clean the back of the lens as well. So that there is a, a glass area there as well, and that's also accessible just to make sure that um, that you've got, uh, the, both of those are clean. Uh, a rocket blower is also a really good idea, although it does, doesn't tend to uh, interfere too much uh, with the autofocus. It's more like smudges and things like that. Uh, those can definitely affect it though. Um, and um, also, if you've got any filters as well, so if um, uh, if you've got filters like a UV filter or something like a polarizer filter or something, then try taking those off and see what kind of results you get as well, because those filters can sometimes throw off the autofocus as well. So uh, start cleaning your lens, take off the filters, and uh, and just see how you go. Okay, so they're the things that I wanted to talk about uh, in regards to focusing. So that's manual or automatic focusing. So now let's talk about uh, stability or movement in the camera. Um, that is probably just as important as focusing. 
I tell people all the time, if you get a chance to shoot on a tripod, you always shoot on a tripod. Uh, if you can't, then use a monopod or brace yourself up against something. I only hold the camera uh, freestyle pretty much as a last resort. I will always have a tripod with me if I can. Now, that said, uh, not all tripods are created equal. Uh, you should check your tripod, lens, and camera, camera combination to make sure that you've got something that is stable. Now, it may look stable, um, but the most minute of vibrations could end up in, uh, it's just a, a world of difference when it comes to sharpness in a photo. For example, something like a, um, a, a landscape photograph. You will really be able to tell the difference when you blow up uh, the photograph, if you're making a big print or you're seeing it on the screen. And one of the things that I do, so I've been doing this for a, a really long time, this method, and, um, and the other day I heard uh, something from a photographer that a, a, a great photographer, Joel Grimes, and he talks about how he used to um, attach a mirror to the front of his uh, lens and then shine a light to it. And it's just funny because I've been doing a very similar type of thing without knowing about his technique. Uh, and I've been doing mine for years. And what I do is I use a little laser. So this is just one of those little laser pointers uh, that you get. I think they're like 4 or $5. Um, and then I grab my lens and using a rubber band, I just attach the laser uh, to, the, to the lens there. And then I'll mount this onto my camera and then I will put everything uh, onto a tripod. And then maybe five, six meters away, I will have a, a usually a piece of paper like that. This is just a one that I made. It's just a, a chart um, where the laser will be shining. I'll just aim the, the laser somewhere in there. It doesn't have to be in the middle. This is just for reference of movement. Uh, but what I'll do is uh, I will uh, I will take a shot pressing the shutter button and I will see what it does. And you'll see any movement, it will be amplified because you're five, six meters away. And the laser is a really precise um, thing that you can really see any movement in. So I will see how much movement I'm getting when I'm pushing the shutter button. And then I will do a uh, another test where I've got the timer set on or a remote shutter. And then the other one is when I lock up the mirror so that I know which combination works with um, with the tripod, lens, and camera that I'm using. So just for a reference, let me show you what, uh, what this lens looks like onto my 5D Mark IV. Um, so what I did is I mounted this at the, end of the, at the end of the room, in my living room, and then I've got the laser pointed at the wall that's just behind me. And what you're seeing now is the shot when I use uh, just the shutter button. So I'm pushing the shutter button, and as you can see, there is some movement in there. Uh, the second uh, clip that you're seeing now, this is the timer, or you can do this with a remote trigger as well. Um, and as you can see, there is a little bit of movement in there. I'm just repeating the, 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 the clips over and over here so you can see. But there is a little bit of movement in there, uh, but not as much as before, okay, because uh, you don't have my finger pointing on the button. And then the third one you can see now is this is the with the mirror locked up. So if you've got a mirrorless uh, uh, camera, then ideally this is you know this is what you're probably going to experience. Uh, so this is with the mirror locked up, and again I've got the timer in there so that you don't have my finger pushing down on the button, uh, contributing to any movement into in the camera. So. Um, so that is one way to really uh, a really good way to test your uh, your camera lens uh, combination, and a lot of the times it, it'll look sturdy, and you won't know until you do this uh, just how much movement you're getting in your camera. So um, the other thing is obviously use a remote trigger if you can. Okay, otherwise you can use the uh, the timer, and again you're just trying to reduce movement by you having your finger pushing on the shutter button. Um, so, uh, and then mirror lockup as well. So that is when you lift the mirror and uh, so you don't have the shutter uh, going up and down uh, and uh, creating that movement as well, because that is a mechanical part as well. Uh, so that is the, uh, th that's my recommendations for the camera. So now let's move on to the subject. And guys, just for a second, if you are enjoying this video, if I could ask you to hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, it really makes a big difference to me. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure that you do subscribe. I make videos like this all the time to help you with your photography. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, that way you'll be notified when I upload a new video. And don't forget about ministryoffoto.com. That's my website where you're going to find a lot of tutorials and uh, you'll also find things such as reviews, 
and some downloads uh, such as Lightroom presets. It's completely free, so make sure you check it out. That's ministryofphoto.com. Okay, so now let's talk about the subject because you could do everything that I just mentioned. You could use a tripod, you could use a, um, a remote trigger, you could lock up your mirror, all of those things, and you may still get some blurriness or um, some motion blur in your photograph. And the reason for that is that maybe your subject is moving too fast uh, for the settings that you've got on your camera. So for those type of situations, you need to make sure that you've got a shutter speed that is fast enough to be able to capture that moment. So if it, it could be one five hundredth of a second, one one thousandth of a second. Um, so if you're shooting, say, something like I say, a Formula One, you may have to shoot at one, two or three thousand or eight thousandths of a second, right? So it, it depends on the situation. Now, when you do that, of course, uh, you're letting less light into the camera. So if you're shooting at one four thousandth of a second, uh, you can just imagine just how, much, how little uh, amount of light is actually getting into the camera. So you're going to have to compensate. And that means either opening up the aperture on your lens or... Uh, you're going to have to raise the ISO, or potentially you may have to do both, depending on how much light there is in the uh, in in the um, in the environment. And so, this is a judgment call. Okay, so um, a lot of the times, if you wanted to do this or have your camera do this automatically for you, you could uh, put your camera. I mean, we talk about aperture priority all the time, but uh, we don't talk as much into uh, timer priority or shutter priority, which uh, uh, is when you set a shutter speed on your camera and then the camera will uh, then uh, set the ISO and the aperture so that you, there is enough light to create an exposure at that shutter speed. But that just may be what you need to do. So it's a judgment call on every situation. So always make sure that you've got a shutter speed that is fast enough to be able to freeze that moment and that is going to help to get your photos nice and sharp. Okay, so the final thing is uh, lens quality. Now this is just common sense stuff because uh, if you pay a lot of money for a professional lens, then you are expecting uh, better quality than a consumer lens. Now that's not to say that you can't get really good uh, results from a consumer lens. But what you may need to do is find the sweet spot for uh, that lens. Um, and that goes as well for the professional lenses. L lenses don't perform the same at each aperture. So uh, this one here, for example, uh, opens up to f2.8, and I think it goes up to f22. But they're two apertures that I normally try not to shoot at because that's I'm not getting the cleanest image uh, possible. Uh, or the clearest image possible when I am uh, shooting at either end of the extremes. So for this one here, for example, this is around f11. That is when I get, that's where I get the best results out of this one particular lens. But I've done the testing for this, and this is just something that you're going to have to do with your lenses. Um, so that you know that there's a sweet spot where you get the sharpest image uh, at a particular aperture. And this goes for all lenses. So do the testing ahead of time so that when you come to taking the photograph, if you know that you need a very, very sharp uh, photograph of something, you know that for that particular lens, it's f8, it's f16, it's f11, because you've already done the testing. So do uh, those measurements, you know, take the same photograph and at every single f-stop, and then blow it up on your screen, have a look at the details, see which one is the clearest, and then you'll know what the best setting is for your lens. And that's everything for this video. Again, if you do have any questions, the comment section below is probably the best place to get in touch with me. Otherwise, you can reach me through any of the usual social media platforms. Uh, you're going to find all the links in the description below. Uh, again, please don't forget to like the video. I want to thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.